Most people think aging is inevitable, but scientists around the world suggest we may soon be able to stay young indefinitely. I just turned 31 this year and not getting any older biologically is something I could very well live with. And that for very long. Kidding aside, when I found out that the fountain of youth might very well be discovered in the next couple of decades, I decided to take fate into my own hands and call out the modern day quest to the fountain of youth. So stick with me if you want to find out why scientists believe aging is reversible and what you can do to maximize your shot at the rejuvenating bath in the fountain of youth. But first, a little history. Where does the legend of the Fountain of Youth actually stem from? As long as humans have been able to bear witness to the negative effects of their progressing age, they have dreamed of being young and vital again. And with this dream, stories of a mythical spring called the Fountain of Youth emerged. The legend state that youth is restored to anyone who drinks from or bathes in its waters. Over the centuries, many people from kings like Alexander the Great to conquistadors like Ponce de Leon have tried to fight the fountain of youth, but since all are dead, none have succeeded on their quest. And so it remains a legend to the present day. All right, now that we know that everybody before us has failed on this quest, why should you believe it doable now? It's pretty simple. Scientific breakthroughs in a field called epigenetics have provided the world with a new exciting treasure map that got scientists, entrepreneurs and not the very least longevity enthusiasts like myself super hyped. Now, without going into too many scientific nerd words, let me explain what those breakthroughs actually are. Basically, over a decade ago, a stem cell researcher called Shinya Yamanaka found a way to reset any living mature cell back into a stem cell. Stem cells are cells from which any cell type can be made, so to say. Now this was so groundbreaking that Shinya Yamanaka got a Nobel Prize in medicine for it. It turns out though that we do not want to reset every cell in our body back into a stem cell because that would mean we would just be a big blob of cell goo without identity. But Yamanaka's discovery inspired scientists around the world to work on fine-tuning his method in order to be able to reset cells only as much as needed. One of these scientists is Dr. David Sinclair. He leads the lab at Harvard Medical School that researches why we age and how to reverse it. He also wrote a great book called Lifespan, which I highly recommend you check out. You'll find the link in the description below. Using Yamanaka's discovery, Dr. Sinclair took old mice that were blind due to a severed optical nerve and made them see again. Now, what's so remarkable about this is that the optical nerve only grows when we're inside our mother's wombs. Once we're outside and the optical nerve is cut, it will not grow back. Neither in mice nor in humans. That is of course until Dr. Sinclair was able to reset the optical nerve cells to that point where they would grow again, enabling the old blind mice to regain their vision. This breakthrough lets us hypothesize that that should well be possible with any other cell type in our bodies, or mice bodies so to say. And because mice share 99% of their genes with us, it suggests that this should work in humans too. Are you hyped yet? No? Dr. Sinclair goes even so far to paint a future where we can just pop a pill containing a so-called friendly virus that helps deliver and start the rejuvenation process. Then for some time we just reverse our age Benjamin Button style and once we arrive at our 20 year old self again we just pop another pill and stop the rejuvenation process. This procedure then could be repeated as many times as we wanted to reverse our aging process. Isn't that amazing? Hmm, I don't know. This sounds like science fiction and like super far away and even if it comes out anytime soon it's probably for the only super rich anyways. I'll probably be dead already before an average Joe like me can benefit of such a treatment. Yeah, maybe. But think of what a dip in the fountain of youth could do. Hmm. Hmm? What just happened? Okay, I am convinced. I don't care how long this takes to come out. What can we do to up our chances? Now, 
That's the attitude I've been looking for. And I already have a plan. For it, you just have to hit the subscribe button and join me on this quest. The modern day quest to the fountain of youth. The plan is simple. We now know that indefinite youthfulness is a realistic possibility and the only question that remains is when is this breakthrough going to happen actually? It might be 10, 50 or even 100 years. But we can only guess. And hence, the biggest unknown is time. For us, this means that we logically only have two options. One, either make the breakthrough happen earlier or two, just simply live longer. Let's look at each of these options individually and ask ourselves what we can actually control and influence. Regarding option one, could we become scientists and work directly towards the breakthrough like Dr. Sinclair? Or could we be influencing and investing in startups, research and people? <coughs> hmm. I don't know about you, but as to myself, I'm no scientist, nor am I rich or influential, at least for the moment. So this really seems as no option for now. Should any of you think differently, please let me know in the comments. Regarding option two, what could we do to live longer? Luckily, I have been passionate about this topic for a while now. And actually, it turns out that in order to increase our lifespan, the best thing that we can do is to work on increasing our health span, which is the portion of our lives that we spend in generally good health and free from disease. Mm. So you're saying your genius plan is to live longer, to live forever? Not exactly, but you're nearly there. Let me rephrase for you. You maximize your chances at a rejuvenating bath in the fountain of youth by one, hitting the like button, two, subscribing, and three, staying young and healthy. Or, in other words, you maximize your life and health span to have the best possible shot at staying young indefinitely. And note here, indefinitely does not mean forever. Hey, are you actually listening? What? Did you say something? <laughs> How do you actually stay in? Well, to be frank, out there are countless methods, resources, devices, apps, supplements, philosophies, teachers, experts, gurus, and much more one can choose from. However, most life and health span extending activities fall into five main areas. Those are 1. Mental health 2. Physical health Three, nutrition and supplementation. Four, sleep. And five, mindfulness and spirituality. All right, you probably already are doing things that fall into at least a few of these five. And after watching this video, you might wonder how those influence your life and health span. I can imagine you want to be able to choose the things that fit you, your lifestyle and your needs, all while knowing it keeps you younger for longer. Last, you likely want to know that what you choose to adopt is safe and that you don't fall into some anti-aging charlatans money-making trap. Should that be the case? Lucky you! Because I was in the same position and I have developed a system to assess the plethora of do's and don'ts for staying young. If you are curious about how the system works, check out this video here on the one thing that helped me the most to stay young.